What's going on everybody, Serial Entrepreneur here in another episode for the Digital Marketing School. And in this episode, I think I have something you guys have been waiting on for a good little bit here and I'm sure you're excited. Uh, but what we're gonna get into is Facebook ads, building the actual ad, how you wanna start planning the actual ad release, what you do from start to finish. Um, that's what's gonna be covered in this next few videos. So you guys pay attention. Um, it's not as hard as most people make it seem or think it is. You just probably aren't doing one or two, maybe three steps uh, that you're missing from your actual campaign that's making you have the issues that you might be seeing when you're running ads. So before you start, uh, just a, a little prequel. We've gone over this in other videos, but you'll wanna make sure that your ad account is set up. Make sure you have a credit card authorization form um, if you're using a credit card from your customer and that, that credit card is attached to their ad account. But again, you need to have that credit card authorization form signed before you can do that. Uh, so all you need to do is just go to business.facebook.com, select the business settings, select your ad account. Um, and then in the top right corner, you can select add new ad accounts from the drop down and create new ad account, request ad account, um, or to, or basically, yeah, you can create one or request it. So if they already have one set up, you can request access to it, or you can create them one, which most of the time you'll be doing. Uh, find the proper settings for the ad account. Once you have that set up, you're just going to head back over to the ads manager page and in the top left hand corner, you're going to make sure that the actual ad account is selected. You'll see it'll say a business or your personal name usually. So you're going to want to click that and actually select the ad account that you're going to be using. Now you can actually begin to build your ad. But before you do that, you're going to make sure you want to have watched the building customer profiles, um, building uh, what is it content or content marketing so that way you know what kind of content you're going to be releasing and also building the uh, customer acquisition funnel so that way you know where your Facebook ad stands uh, with regards to your entire sales funnel um, and that, that'll give you a picture so you never want to just go straight into Facebook ads and start creating ads and then hoping they work you want to plan these out and that's what we're actually going to show you how I plan them out um, so that way you can actually have some success with your ads. So building an ad part one. Now, before you begin to dump tons of money into Facebook ads, like I said, you're going to want to do some testing and some planning. So I usually take about the first week to two weeks to do a whole testing phase where I'll probably spend anywhere from two to four hundred dollars, depending on their budget, basically just figuring out which audiences are going to be the best audiences to target, what demographics, what interests they have, uh, things like that. So. Um, and you'll see that right here, quick note, two weeks to run that test ad campaign. Um, you should not begin a full fledged campaign before you run the test. And it's because you don't know which audiences are going to be best to market to. Um, and you're going to end up actually wasting a ton of money. You can have some success, but you're probably going to waste more money than you could have saved. Um, so you're testing for the audience that will perform the best, the ad and copy. Um, or the ad copy messaging or ad creative. So copy messaging, that always means like the wording. Um, and again, the creative is the images, the video, stuff like that. Um, you're going to want to test the best times of the day and the week, things like that. So those are all key things to keep in mind. Now, this is where you will actually start to spend $5 a day. Okay. That's that. This is the key part. This is the area where you're going to spend $5 a day. You actually spend way more than this once you get a full fledged campaign running, but you do the $5 a day tests for three to five days together to gather data on the audiences that you're targeting at first to see which ones you need to break down and go deeper into and spend more money on. Because that's the thing. If you look at it, you have two main factors. So the gender and the age different, well, well, three, if you count location, the location is important. Yes. Um, so it just depends on what kind of audience you're trying to reach, whether it be local, national, regional, whatever. But, um, outside of that, you have your age and your gender. So the age, you know, there's a broad range of ages and not every product or service sells best to every single age group, right? So you're going to want to figure out what the exact age ranges are that work best for your campaign and whether it's a male audience, male dominated or female dominated audience, or may maybe it's, you know, equally both. Um, but you'll want to find that information out and that's what testing does. Also, like I said, you're testing the copy and the creative. So you're seeing what words or phrases or things that you're saying, what messaging you're putting out there is going to be effective. And then what photo video is going to be effective. You know, if you have a video of like say it's a dog and it's a cute puppy running around and it provides a lot of engagement that could be a very good ad for you um, and vice versa you know it could actually turn out to be bad not all cute puppy videos go viral um, so let me see here 
let's get into the one of the most important parts of all of this is that you get to segment the different types of audiences like I mentioned and you'll want to test that you don't cross interests between those test audiences so we'll actually just get into actually looking at an ad and again you'll want to look at the objective so real quick the top objectives I want you guys to know are going to be number one is going to be conversions all right, and this is where the pixel comes in place. So you don't have the pixel installed. It's not going to work for you. Definitely have the pixel installed, but it tracks all of your data that happens on your website. Ads to cart, people who purchase, um, people who just visit the website or specific web pages. You can track all of that and build, you know, audiences based off of that. You can build lookalike audiences based off of that. And we'll get into that again um, in another episode. That's for building different types of reconverting audiences or rebuilding new audience segments to test so we'll get in that's a completely different type of video number two is going to be engagement and this is great when you're trying to do page post engagements or PPE ads um, page post engagements are literally when you post an ad to your page or post a post to your page <laughs> and you go in the back end manager and you basically just use that to promote that post um, so you can use those to sell. You can put links inside the inside the messaging, stuff like that. And then number three, finally, is going to be the lead generation ad. That's my my third favorite. And this works well for professional services like doctors, lawyers, um, real estate agents, even where you're collecting leads and you're trying to get their contact information to send them more information. So lead generation is obviously a great one. You can look at brand awareness and reach. Again, those are going to be more for trying to get, uh, if you're just trying to build branding or trying to get the word out about a company, you know, it's not going to convert high sales. It's just, it's really good for basically keeping top of mind awareness out there because it's just showing ads to as many people as possible. Uh, so that's why we focus on these three. So there's the lead generation ad at the bottom. This is one of the newer ones. Um, but these are the main three that we're going to actually focus on building ads for our customers. So again, or that we won't go too deep into each one of these in this video because we're actually just talking about setting up an ad and getting the ad structure down so that way you know how to test interest groups. But they're all basically the same. You just need to make sure you're doing the right type of goal when you start building the ad. So again, if you're trying to get purchases or people to add to cart or people to view your website, use the conversion ad. If you're trying to get engagement with your Facebook page or a post or maybe a specific product you're promoting, promoting or an event, you can do an engagement ad. Lead generation is going to be, you, you literally build a contact form where when they click on it, they submit their information. So again, when you're trying to collect information, this is another great way to do that. All right, so that's basically it there, guys, for that part. So now we'll actually look at building an ad. So just really quickly, before we get into the ad, I want to go into some really you know key pointers about interest groups and I mentioned it right here and see where I said you don't want to cross between test audiences alright so an interest group what you're gonna actually do is build different groups in the Facebook targeting options uh, that will be related to your potential customers. So, for example, with myself, if you look at this list I have here, here's some pot potential interest groups you can build. Websites, celebrities and public figures, brands, organizations and groups like uh, charity events, stuff like that, holidays and events, direct interest. So if it's like about dogs, a direct interest would be dogs or like a type of dog. So breeds could be something, um, you know, it's that's specific to dogs but that could be a direct interest um, businesses devices used age and location are also testing factors stuff like that so the main ones you're gonna look at obviously are websites brands organizations groups um, public figures stuff like that to build those audiences um, if you have like for example if you're going after a restaurant and you're trying to find someone who likes seafood you could do a bunch of different types uh, people who have interest in a bunch of types of popular seafood items um, or you could do a whole interest group on popular seafood restaurants and people who like seafood restaurants so that could be your businesses but the big thing is so say like for example we'll say Nike Nike right 
if you were to do Nike, they have <laughs> figures. Um, they have a brand, but they also have a website. So you wouldn't want to use if you're testing an interest group and you put Nike in your brands category, you wouldn't want to also put them in your websites category because they're already being tested once, right? So make sure you build the audience or the interest groups into audiences or into targets that make the most sense. So Nike, I would probably go more with a brand than I would a website, um, but that's just me. So that that's what you're doing with interest groups. So and we'll get into how that works when we get a little further into it. But I just wanted to clarify, you don't want to cross those up. OK, you want to keep them completely separate and test them separately. Um, also, make sure to only run ads in the news feed uh, for Facebook when testing interest groups. That's a key thing. Uh, you'll want to start with a test audience size to be at least seventy five thousand and no more than prop sorry, at least 75,000 and probably no more than 750,000 people. Uh, above that, you're just testing too large of an audience. Really, you're trying to get 1,000 to 2,000 people anyways to test that ad. Uh, run the ads for no less than three days to collect data. Um, I usually go about four to five. In the beginning, be more open with your demographic tar targeting, specifically age um, and gender. Just don't necessarily stick to just male or just female or 18 to 24 do very broad open targets um, unless you just you're a hundred percent absolutely sure that men will never buy a product or women will never buy this product um, or that there's no one you know a certain age that will buy a product something like that you have to be absolutely sure before you don't test it on Facebook um, you will also want to cross test your interest groups with the products and services you're running ads for. If an ad doesn't do well within the first interest group you test it, you test it in, um, doesn't necessarily mean that it, that the interest group is bad. So you'll want to test the other products or services or another type of ad. Um, the testing schedule will kind of look like this. So basically all I'm saying is, you don't want to necessarily get rid of an interest group or get rid of an ad just because you've used it once, right? Unless you have just clear data showing that it's not going to work. So what you usually do is you'll start with what I like to do is about four ads, um, four to five ads to start. Um, you can definitely do more, especially if there's a lot more products and services. You'll want to do different ads for each one of those products and services. Uh, to see which ones are going to do best but then for each one of those ads you're going to want to pair it up with an interest group and you're only going to want to pair it up with one interest group or run one interest group at a time so you're not going to want to run you know eight interest group or eight ads going to the same interest group you'll flood them out and you'll you'll kind of make them upset so I, that's why i typically start with four broader ads um, and then i go into four different interest groups with those ads now again if you have more products and services do more ads and interest groups you can build tons of different interest groups so add one will basically go with interest group one, add two will go with interest group two, add three with interest group three, add four with interest group four. And that's basically it. So after three to five days of tests, so this is where, that's the ad set that you would test right here. This is the interest group test. So we'll build one really quickly. So if we go in and we do conversions and we're gonna name this interest group, and we'll just say for like, if this was for my digital marketing school, it's not my pixel or it's, this is a test pixel, but we'll just say for the digital marketing school, this is an interest group. All right. And then we're in our ad set name. I'm going to do 18 to 65 plus to start, obviously to 65 plus. And I'm also going to do this one. I'll do celebrities or public figures, celebrities and public figures. Cool. So I'll go down here. I select my pixel. Now the objective needs to be what you're trying to do. Now, if you're trying to get someone to purchase, you need to have a purchase tag, something like that. Um, you can see I just have this turned off because I'm not really working on it right now, but you can do the purchase objective. That's if you're trying to get them to purchase. I recommend if you're starting with an e-commerce business, you're going to want to do add to carts first um, to gather data so that way you can actually get people who are adding your items to cart and then build retargeting at audiences off of them or look like audiences off of them. Uh, but yeah, definitely start with add to cart. But if you know you're trying to go for a purchase and it's a higher end sale, something like my school, I can start with a purchase because I already have previous data. Um, you can set it to be purchase. 
Now there's offers here. You can easily set up an offer if you want. You don't always have to do it. Um, if you wanted to do an offer, you literally just click this and then you enter in your offer title, your details about the offer when it starts and ends, um, online only or whether it's online and in store, the URL offer code. Um, let me see how many offers or promo code. You can do one code or unique codes. Unique codes is pretty cool, but you do have to upload a CSV of your unique codes. So I usually just go with a one-time code to make it simple. Um, and then you have your advanced options like hide the share option on your offer if you don't want people sharing it. If you have a limited number, you set your total number of offers, and that's really it. Um, you can see the notification that they'll get, and then the email that they'll get right here. Pretty simple stuff, right? You don't always have to do an offer. It just needs to make sense for you whether you use it or not. Now, getting into this, obviously you can use a saved audience if you have a saved audience, um, but you're gonna be doing interest groups, so you won't necessarily have the saved audiences unless you went into Audience Builder and actually created them there. So we're gonna just go ahead and actually build out our audience. So again, we have 18 to 65 celebrities, public figures, and the only other thing I would say in the US. So that way I know who I'm targeting, right? And you'll want to do, if you're doing a national or international type of campaign, you'll want to segment countries out. Um, if you're doing a state by state campaign, you should even segment states out so you know which states sell the best. It's all about segmenting things out so you know where your results are coming from. All right, so the United States, we have that. We have our targeting set to 18 to 65. We have all, we're not doing men. We're just gonna do all in the beginning. And then we're going to select our targets. Now, if I wanted to do celebrities, obviously, I'm going to choose celebrities in the industry. So, Ty Lopez, Grant, Gary V, Grant Cardone. And all you have to do, really, is enter in a couple of them. And look, you can click Suggestions. It'll you know, give you a ton of names down here. So, Russell Brunson, I believe he's the owner of ClickFunnels. Amy Porterfield is an advertiser. Marie Forleo is an advertiser. Neil Patel definitely is. Ryan Dice definitely is. Um, I'm pretty sure Frank Kern does more motivational speaking, so I wouldn't put him in here. But look, so number one, it says potential reach 222 million. When look, none of these guys have even close to where it would equal 222 million. The reason why is because they've added this expand interest when it increases conversions at a lower cost per conversion. I usually take that off so I can see what my audience actually looks like. Um, and I don't like to leave it on for the ads anyways. That would be, again, for something if you're trying to just do more branding and you have a huge budget, you don't have to worry about it as much. That's great. So you can see we have 33 million people, right? And that's a huge audience. We don't want to start with 33 million people. Again, we said 75 to 750,000 for the test. So what I'm going to do is, and this is the trick that most people don't necessarily get how to do or even think to do. Okay, so what we're going to do, if they like all of these people, they probably like something with digital marketing or something with uh, building an online business or working from home, something like that, right? Being an entrepreneur, um, sales, all that kind of stuff. So what we're going to actually do is we'll look at all these. So we'll look at some of the bigger accounts. You want to look over here, right here, where it shows how many people they have. So you can see who the larger audiences are and like Gary Vee and Ty Lopez are going to be the biggest ones. So I would probably break those out. So I'm going to take Ty Lopez out and then I'm going to narrow my audience and I'm going to add Ty Lopez here. Now, why am I doing this? Why am I just putting them down here? Well, at this point, now it's saying they have to like somebody in this group but they also have to like Ty Lopez. So not only do they like one interest, but they have expressed that they like two interests. See, if you just leave Ty Lopez here, all they have to do is like one of these. It doesn't mean they like all of them, right? So if they just like one of them, then that's great, but you know, that's a huge audience again, and that was 33 million people. So what we've done, we've added Ty Lopez over here. It's cut our audience already down to 4.2 million people. So we'll leave uh, Gary V here. We'll probably take out someone like, Let's see, we'll take Russell Brunson out and we'll put him down here. Russell. Okay. Got to spell it out more. All right, so then we took Russell Brunson out, right? You never want to make sure, you make sure that he's, uh, you always want to make sure that they're not left in here. All right, so Russell Brunson's out. So next, I would want to take someone like Amy Porterfield, and I've just built this audience before, so I already know how it's going to break out. If I do it, if I even break them evenly, it's still too large. So I'm going to add a third interest. And this makes it even better because now they have not just chosen to like one of these, but they've 
liked three of these. So this is an audience that has liked three of these categories, right? I took Amy out up there, so I'm gonna leave Gary V. I'll probably take Grant Cardone out, put him down here. Boom. And you can see our audience is getting smaller and smaller because less and less people will like more than one, right? So I could try to go even further, um, and I probably will. I'll probably take Neil Patel and Marie Forleo. Um, and I'll put Marie. There we go. Add her there. And actually, I think I'm going to leave Neil Patel up here. Cool. So now you guys can see, and actually if I wanted to, I could probably try taking one of these guys out and making it down to four. I'd have to play around with it, but for this, we'll just actually stick to these three. Um, but you can see now why this is a much more qualified audience. If they like all three of these, it probably means they're interested in something that I'm talking about, right? And you would do the same principle, whether it was a restaurant, whether it was a car dealership you know if they like cars you would find specific car celebrities or car people that are related to that brand and then you just build audiences like this around it for your test groups and that's all we're doing all right so now that we have that set we have our audience of about 260,000 people that looks good to me um, we could try you know a larger audience and see later but we'll start with this to you know, just to get things running. And this again is only going to be one of our ad sets. So let me see here. You can see we do add one with add one, add two with interest group two, add three with interest group three, add four with interest group four. So this is going to be interest group one. So we would create, you know, three more interest groups based off of this list right here, you know, or we can find other interest groups that relate to my industry um, and build those out. So that's how you're going to start this ad or this ad campaign. Again, just get, just a quick reminder, you're going to go through placements. I undo all of these, go into Facebook, get rid of instant articles and write column, keep the feeds. It's basically all you want to do there. Set your budget to about five bucks a day. Again, if you have more, you can always run more. You'll get quicker results that way. Um, let's see. Conversions, yes, seven days click or one day view. If you guys don't know what these mean, you can instantly just hover over these and it'll give you a quick explanation. Um, basically, this has to do with the conversion, whether it's in seven days they click or they view content in a day. That would be the conversion ratio or the conversion metric that's measured. So that's all this stuff is, very simple stuff. But again, if you get confused, you can look at all these. And just a quick reminder for you guys, um, a, a quick tool that you guys definitely need to take advantage of. Crap, I didn't mean to do that. Go back. All right, guys. So just really quick, if you know, a quick reminder, if you aren't using this, you need to. Um, you can just click Contact Us right here. You click Help and then click Contact Us over here. It'll take you to their support page. And if you're an advertiser with them, you shouldn't have an issue getting in touch with them. Um, on the weekends, they're closed, but or you know they're closed at least their chat you can email them and ask community but during the regular business hours during the week their chat is open and it's really quick response time uh, they're doing a lot better at providing great customer service now so it's working out a lot better uh, as far as getting results and getting answers from Facebook when you're getting stuck in areas so just the last little part and this is again you just want to keep things simple here so we'll do a single image um, you can do a video if you like these to work the best if you have an online store or something like that these feature collections work really well uh, and all of these are super easy to set up now they even give you recommended specs for the ads um, so that way you get the most out of your out of your ads but all we're going to do here is we'll, we'll just select single image and keep it easy and all you're going to do is you're going to upload an image let me see if I can find my images I was using the other day. I know this is one. There we go. And we'll just put that on there. And the recommended pixels. If this is this is actually going to be for a link or it's going to have a link, 
when you use it so this ad actually probably won't look the best yeah this image isn't going to look the best if I put it it's actually set to 8 1080 by 1080 but if I set it to 1200 by 628 it wouldn't be that hard and again you're just going to do that using Canva so another quick example um, if you haven't seen Canva used yet all you would do is you're going to come in here I'll show you see I have it designed right here so actually if I just exit out on that upload image and this is called revenue streams no it's not whatever it's all good we'll just stick with our other image because we're not actually gonna run the ad anyways but this is what the image would look like it and it would show up in this area really well um, instead of you know being cut off but that's all you do you just upload your photo there don't keep it don't put too much context or context in it or any content in it it needs to be more photo based the more context that you have the less likely that Facebook will run your ad um, where you're trying to get them to go now this is important if you guys watch the customer acquisition funnel uh, building customer acquisitions or acquisition funnels then you would know that you need to put the website URL here for your funnel page not your actual website um, because the funnel would be the next step right so this is where you put your funnel page in if you have a funnel URL uh, your headline is going to be what goes on the headline of the actual so let me put the picture back in here just so you can see what that looks like you know upload it here Cool, now we have an image. So after we add our URL, we go to the headline and the headline is gonna be something simple like, best school ever. And it won't actually say best school ever, but that's, you know, kind of just to show you guys where it shows up, best school ever right there. Your text is going to be, let me see, that's newsfeed link description. So that's up here um, or down here, you can see newsfeed link description. So, um, get a quick preview preview of course blah 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 and you just want to add in your text here so here's how I kinda of like to build it I, I'll, I guess I'll show you specifically the top messaging needs to be the what the actual ad is gonna be about so this is gonna be free audit template info and before this I would probably say something like are you having trouble landing clients this free audit template um, has helped land several of my students thousand dollar clients a month blah 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 we do this and this and this and you have the full explanation use a few emojis but that's basically it my call to action would be learn more maybe it actually might be sign up yeah because I would say in here submit your email um, submit your email to get a copy of our digital marketing audit template for free so it would be sign up and then here you would have just a reminder of what it is or land clients land clients today would be the tag or the headline so you could just do like this start landing clients today question or exclamation point and then in the description we would say you know something along the lines of almost what I set up there um, but just something to kind of get them thinking are you doing everything you can to land clients start making thousands today you know something like that um, on mobile it's gonna you're not gonna see much that's why you know you want to have this part kind of right here where they can view it um, let me see go up we'll show you what desktop looks like so you can see are you doing everything you can to land clients start making thousands today blah 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 and it's that simple like you just want you want to make sure that your message is you know to the point so are we, we're asking the question are you having trouble landing clients um, here's the free audit you can download it now this is what I've used to land thousands and dollars of revenue myself and my students have used this to land thousands of revenue blah 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 the display link a lot of people use this blank um, so like if I left in my digital marketing school up here it would already have it set to digital marketing school.teachable.com 
But uh, just one thing to know is you can't put in, so I can't put in like Nike.com. If I put in Nike.com and I submit this ad, you can see down here it says Nike.com. I don't own Nike.com, so Facebook will kick back and say your ad wasn't approved because you are not Nike. <laughs> so um, then you just want to make sure the, the pixel, the tracking pixel is turned on, and then you just click confirm, and that's it, and you're starting to run an ad. So that is how you would build your first interest group and actually set up the ad for that interest group. Again, the most important parts are the targeting. So you're going to want to make sure that you have the right targeting audience um, and that you're matching these up correctly. So then the next part of this is once you have these set up and you have them running, what do I do next? Well, you're going to run them th for three to five days worth of testing. Don't stop the ads. Let them run at least three days, um, upwards of five, to get as much data in as you can. Uh, and you really want to try and at least get your ad to be about an audience of a thousand so that way you know you think of it like a survey right a survey they typically say you should do an audience of about a thousand people to get a, a, a big enough or a large enough audience and the same thing kind of applies here you want to sit, show your ad to about a thousand people before you know whether it was an effective ad or not people get on Facebook at different times of the day different times of the week they are engaging on the news feed and things like that different ways so you want to make sure you're hitting all different types of people based on when they visit Facebook and when they engage with content so that's why you do it for three to five days and you test different types of ads, um, ad copy, ad messaging, stuff like that with different interest groups. So after the three to five days, you're going to check for at least two out of the three of the following results in the report. So click through, you want to have the link click through rate above 1%, link cost per click below one to two dollars and then cost per thousand between ten to fifteen dollars depending on the industry so we'll go into this test account really quick we'll go to ads manager and I'll show you just some test ads we ran for this so if I wanted to do that all you have to do is come over here to performance you're gonna click customize columns and you can add in all of the columns that mean anything to you so again we said cost per click link so click through rate so this is one CTR link click through rate all right we need to get cost per click link and then I always forget where this one's located on here but we can just type it in and then cost per thousand okay those are going to be the important results that we're going to be looking at after we run um, the test campaign and so then all you're going to do is you're going to come here and you're going to say, okay, well, my cost per click, my cost per thousand was 880. That's good. Um, my cost per click didn't show up because nobody clicked. This was probably an engagement post. Um, my cost per clicks down here were 79 cents. So that was good. Um, click through rates weren't as high. So that means those ads probably weren't worth moving forward with though, unless the CPM, which CPM right here, cost per click was 79 cents. That's good. CPM was $2.58. Yeah, I'd probably run that ad again, right? Did really well. So that's just how you want to look at the ads and you want to judge whether it's a winning ad or a losing ad. You look at these three factors and you determine, is it a winning ad? This one is obviously not a winning ad. Cost per click was high. Click through rate was low. Cost per thousand was above $15. So again, we keep it 10 to $15. So these are the little um, the little results that you're going to want to check out to make sure you know the ad is performing well. There's other um, characteristics you can look at as well and that you'll want to look at. So I recommend going into breakdown and you do by age and gender. So you can see who the most targeted audiences were by Facebook, who they sent the most ads to, and then where engagements happen. So you can see right here, 45 to 54, we had an engagement, a unique link click. All right, and that's that's what's important. So you can see right here, it shows 18 to 24 females had six engagements. Uh, unknown had zero engagements. Female 25 to 34 had five engagements. So these were both probably decently performing age groups. It could have been the ad copy that was bad, but this is a good audience to test with. We know that because this audience was clicking on our ads. We would then take it and maybe adjust our ad copy, our ad creative, stuff like that. But this is how you look at the ads and tell. All right, so then all you're going to do from there, once you've reviewed your ads from the first test, all you're going to do from there is basically remove any ads that didn't meet the requirement. So change up the ad copy, the ad creative, maybe try a different interest group. Um, but that's actually what you're going to, so what we'll get to in this next part is right here, you're going to remove any losing ads and replace them with winning ads. Um, so if you have high conversions, sales, or people adding items to cart, 
from the first test, you will want to take that ad and then scale it to increase conversion. Um, so basically just add more to the budget to increase and get more sales. You would also break it down and we'll go into that in scaling ads, which is going to be in the next next video. So again, um, after you run that test, you're just going to basically set up add one with interest group four, add two with interest group three, add three with interest group two, and add four with interest group one. So you can see we basically just flip flopped it from up here. Um, and that's if these were doing well or did just enough. If they didn't get any conversions or any sales or any leads, you don't want to consider that necessarily a winning ad. It was a good performing ad, but it didn't get you what you wanted. So you're going to want to make sure to test it with a different interest group and see maybe that ad just wasn't worth running at all. Um, it just got a bunch of clicks but didn't get any conversions. So you might want to test new messaging, new photo, video again. All right. Now building an ad part two. There are a few main pieces you want to um, you want the ad can you want to have in the ad campaign that you will want to pay attention to. So again, link cost per click you want to be under one to two dollars. Cost per thousand anywhere under um, and under between ten to fifteen dollars. Uh, link click through rate over one percent. So that's them clicking on links. Um, you want them to actually be over one percent. Uh, relevance score and that's going to be something you can only see it on the ad level so once you get here you can actually see a relevancy score and the relevancy score tells you whether the excuse me whether the ad is effective or relates to the audience that you're trying to target and that's basically it you you want to look at reach um, reach is a good indicator it tells you whether you've reached at least a thousand people that's what you want to do you want to reach a thousand different people so that way you have a large enough survey uh, frequency just means how many times an ad was shown to the same person and you want frequency because again if you remember in the other videos it takes five to seven times to sell someone on something right next is going to be impressions and impressions basically says so if we have a reach of about a thousand people but we have 1200 impressions that means a thousand unique people or individual separate people saw the ad but 200 of them out of that 1000 probably saw it again all right and that's where frequency kind of relates uh, you have age and gender, like I mentioned before, and then device platforms used. So again, you just click here, go to breakdown, and then you can do right here where it says impression device, platform device, platform or placement and device, stuff like that. So those are key to determine, you know, whether they came from an Android phone, an iPhone, uh, what else, a desktop, stuff like that, right? And then lastly, location, that'll be something you can look as well, look at as well. That'll, again... I believe be right here yep in the breakdown country region DMA all that stuff so now that you kind of have an understanding of the breakdown and you've looked at the ads you're gonna want to get the most engaged audiences that you have and again you're gonna you're gonna use the LCPC the CPM and the LCTR so click-through rate um, cost per click cost per thousand all of those metrics to determine which ads work best and then obviously doing the age and gender breakdowns location breakdowns device breakdowns and determine what the most uh, what the highest performing or best engagement was when you're looking at those audiences so that's re that's really it that's all you're doing for the interest group testing phase now this is going to lead you into the scaling phase so the scaling phase is the, the part where you take winning ads and basically just build them up from there and that'll be in the next video that we go into guys so i hope this video was helpful for you guys if you have any more questions about facebook ads as always leave them in the comments section below uh but can't wait to see you in the next video where again we're going to talk about scaling the facebook ads so for now guys serial entrepreneur out